Hey guys, it's RC Kane. I'm glad to have you back here again. Today we're going to be looking from a game that I played a long time ago. Let's see actually how old this is. Uh, back in 2021. Uh, but that's not really the point why I'm showing it to you. This is turn 78. And this is when I played M.A. Iryu. It was a Disciples game. I was playing with Abyssia. A really good guy. Really good uh, player. But my takeaway. This is back when I started my Dominions career. Of course. I wasn't haven't played not even a year at that point. I don't believe. But I did take away two major things here from this game. For sure. Now this isn't turn we won. We won next turn. Uh, we do have some pretty large armies here casting pretty major things. Um, Abyssia has some pretty large armies. That's the last throne we need right there we just took. We see uh, Agartha, Yis, Marignan all coming at, at us here. Um, this is a DE game, Dominions Enhance the Aim. If you see some things you might not normally see. As far as how big our empire is here, we stretch all the way up here from this throne all the way through to over here. So yeah, we were pretty, pretty large at this point. Um, Naba and Marignan was a team, so they were kind of large. Yis and Flegra Phagia was a team. And Gartha, I think, <clears throat> could have been Gartha and Yis were a team, I don't remember. But anyway... Yeah, we had some pretty major fights going on here, but you really have to pay attention to your thrones. If you let someone just kind of walk through uh, kind of your territory here, I, I'm pretty sure this was Glowing Caverns. Oh, was Jutenheim was Agartha's teammate, I believe. If you let someone just walk through and just take your last uh, throne... You may be uh, maybe the last one that they actually need if you weren't paying attention. Uh, regardless of who you are, I mean, it happens to a lot of people. Uh, but uh, that's not necessarily anything I meant to talk about. So I, these are two major takeaways I took from winning a game like this. So at the very beginning of the game, we were at war. I think our first war actually was with Naba and Marignan. And we control. We already at that point controlled some of this land here. Uh, I think we might have controlled some of this back and forth, maybe some of this. I think I think that's Shambhala's, but maybe we didn't control this, but we fought with them a little bit and controlled some of this, I believe. But uh, yeah, we did own a lot of this right here. So, even though we lost our first war in Lost Land, we were able to then go to a point in the game where we were still a threat and were able to win from there. So just because you lost your first war or had to make some kind of peace treaty that did not favor you in a way, doesn't mean the game is over for you. Uh, I think that was a pretty big thing that I learned there, especially being a newer player. Don't just give up after your first war, especially in a Disciples game. Um, other than that, another big major concept that I took from this game, because I've never played Iryu before, I never played a super raidy nation, um, and what I mean by raidy, I mean of course you just have these city lords here that are really, really good raiders. And yeah, sure, I still have standing armies, I have a couple, but um, it's that the fact of you need to continuously raid. And raid, and raid, and raid, and raid. See how Yis is attacking us here? Well, we should be taking that back this turn. But we know we already have the wind in the bag. Because they can't uh, siege a fort, crack it, and then break in. And stop us from claiming our throne. But normally, like, I would be sending... Uh, well, actually, these are blood hunters. Uh, who would be able to reach? These guys would be able to go over there and take that. They're not in area. Let these guys be able to go over and take that. I'd have someone go over here and take this from here. Uh, he could do it. So, like, I could have someone take this. I could have. Not sure what's on that. We'll have to look. He raided over here, but we would try to go back and raid. 
Agartha, something like this. So, being able to constantly raid your opponent not only gives you income. Sure, like these two wouldn't necessarily give us income, but it is turning him off of two farmlands. Um, just being able to hurt them income-wise is also very, very beneficial. Um, also, stabilizing your income back uh, is a pretty big deal. So those are two of the major concepts that I really took from winning a game like this. Uh, raid, raid, raid. And just because you lost your first war doesn't mean you lost the game. Uh, we do see some very interesting uh, units around here from Abyssia being... Uh, goodness being... Uh, some of these DE summons and whatnot. Bunch of cool stuff here. One guy. Let's see, let's see. Here's a Garth's army. Might as well show some of these cool little armies while we have a chance. Don't see too many uh, late games. Swamp drinks with the living mercury so they don't die from the poison. Good. Yeah, you have to be careful with those uh, living mercuries. They might kill a lot of your own guys. There's another large Abyssia force attacking underwater. The uh, Moon Bowl was a pretty uh, nice item if you ever play DE. Ember Lord. We also have Rivers of Lava Up and Gift of Health, if you didn't know what globals we had. Rivers of Lava is going to be uh, making uh, volcanoes and whatnot around the place, so if you see a lot of... Is it, does it make lava? I don't think it makes lava lakes. I think it just makes volcanoes and magma pools, yeah. And that's really helped our Jimin come out, both mine and Abyssia's. So there's a magma pool there, there's a magma pool there. There's a magma pool there, volcano, magma pool, magma pool, we're at 27 income for fire, and I'm sure his is even higher than that. So yeah, very, very cool. Um, but yeah, their D has a lot of very interesting spells and globals you can put up. So that's really all I had. Um, I will show you the next turn. There we go. Turn 79. Let's turn one, one on. Of course, we didn't do any attacking because we had the win. See two raids from Yis, and then we have our victory here. I guess we review history. I review history. I did join this game. In expansion, probably around now. I think right around now I joined the game. I was uh, I was a sub. This was a sub game. Let's see, Ashdod and Pythium. Man, I forgot what man down there. Let's see, now we're fighting with Bond and whatnot. It was in year two. Changing back and forth with a lot of things. It's a very long war that we didn't really get anything out of and they took more land from us than we took from them I mean, we I mean we took a good bit for a while but we had to peace out we had just do something else oh yeah Shambhala joined in I think or we already took Shambhala at that point or took some maybe we did I don't remember
course, we started raiding over here. We took out Pythium. Let's see it. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what we had going on there. Looks like Shambhala actually did live through the whole game, though. No one were able. To, no one took his cap. Um. But yeah, I had a lot of fun. Learned a lot of things, guys. I'm sure you're always kind of learning more from each game you play. You don't want to become stagnant. Um, just even even if it's a new concept or uh, a new type of, or new way to play or how to play a certain nation, because even your knowledge of other nations can be very very beneficial whenever you're playing against them. Uh, so keep that in mind. You don't want to just be a one trick pony and that's the only thing you know. So, uh, alright guys, that'll be all. Hope you have a good one. Hope this video helped or at least taught you something. Have a good one. Bye.